anchors up, sails it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you? You know, um, spent the past two days out in the yard. My allergies, uh, I think, are bad as they've been since I was a but a but a grade school boy. Um, and for whatever reason, I decided that I was going to really hit that anchor. I was really going to hit that anchor like I was really testing the voice just to see if it could do it. Really risking a squeak there, really, really going out on the edge and really just hitting that anchor hard. It was strong, though. I appreciate that, Spikes. My voice squeaked right before we stopped, right before we started hitting the record button. And I was like, you know what? We're we're going for it. But there's no holding back now. I got 60 minutes to glory. <laughs> A to B, five seconds. Let's go. All right. Well, last week we did a die on this hill on takes you yeah, and yeah, i yeah. so we are um we're going to expand that this week here and uh have it with our some of our listeners and patrons yeah yeah uh, yeah weighing in their uh their hot takes yeah uh and if you guys uh we we enjoyed doing it last week it's been fun um so if you're in the youtube section right now and you have a controversial take that you fully believe in a dill, a dill, a hill in which you are willing to die on. For example, I don't like dill. This is a true statement, although try and keep it college football related, I suppose. But I bet I really hate dill. I really don't like dill at all. This is, this, that's a different conversation for a different day. We're not that deep into the wasteland, but maybe we are. But yeah, these are some user submitted ones. We got Spikes and Esquire uh, in the live chat right now. Guys, if you think of one during the course of the show and you want to plop it into the uh, Discord chat as we as we go along, you guys go right ahead. And uh, Kyle, we have um, a couple from Austin. I know we got at least one from Zach. Um, let's let's start off strong. Let's start off strong. Ohio State wins the national championship game in 2014. Excuse me, with Cardell Jones at quarterback. The keyword there being only. Ohio State only wins the national championship in 2014 with Cardell Jones at quarterback. Spike says correct. I don't know if this is I don't know how controversial this is. If I'm being honest, um I know like it's it's a common like there there are some people who want to take JT Barrett and put him on there are some some people want to build a statue of JT Barrett outside of uh, outside of the horseshoe. Th there are people who are like, oh, the record books, the wins, the leadership, the guts, the glory. There are people out there who want to build a goddamn statue to the kid and put it right in the middle of Buckeye Griff. There are those of us who um, have a um, less favorable opinion of JT Barrett, um, and like the guts and the glory and the leadership and, and all of that. I agree, but he was a subpar thrower of the football, and it's not all his fault. I think. I think. If we're being honest, Urban Meyer has a lot of fault to blame there between beating his shoulder up and then just not developing him as a passer, but also just like the brutal number of shots he took on his shoulder running the ball. Yeah, it's a yeah, JT great on um decision making, great on he wasn't the quickest player, but being able to make guys miss when he needs to, getting that extra yard or two. For sure. Uh, definitely. He definitely I noticed was, you um, didn't say that, anything that guy. about throwing the ball. Yeah, definitely <laughs> that guy that uh, <laughs> um, I can get you the, those yards when it needed when it's needed the most. Yeah. Again, I've great leader, great leader, great leader on and off. Great leader on and off the field. Yeah. 
This is for sure. This is another Tim Tebow. Yeah, for sure. It's another Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow had a huge arm, though. I, I, inaccurate. I, inaccurate. Well, I didn't but, say anything yes. about the accuracy. <laughs> I didn't say anything about the accuracy. Just Tebow had a really strong arm. Mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't as good as decision maker as JT Barrett. Um, I think they both had timing issues as far as throwing the ball. Um, but, but, when, but when JT was on, he was on though. Yeah. Like he, he had some, he had some great moments, but yeah, he, he's, he's, he's Ohio state's Tim Tebow. He's not going to be the most talented quarterback Ohio state has had or, um, or even before him, um, there's been some uh, better quarterbacks overall, but but his leadership and his ability to win games, it it, it showed. But does it does that mean that should build a statue after him? No, doesn't mean that. Okay, but but the, okay, so, but the question the the that that was my fictitious hot take. That was that that was the that was the straw man argument. Um, the actual argument here is that essentially JT Barrett can't win the national title. He doesn't. The The implication here is that he does not. Well, maybe he beats Wisconsin, but that he does not beat Alabama and or Oregon. That's that's the implication here. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I'll, I'll I'll play. I'll fill in for Austin here. Uh, uh, first, let me read what Spike says. But really, it was only going to work with Jones having only one game of film out there for Saban. Saban had to guess his weaknesses and guess wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, 100 percent. Not not only. Was Cardell Jones an unknown. Which he was. Again, as, as Spikes points out, he and only think, had Wisconsin tape. And in that game. What, what it was basically just Devin Smith outrunning the Wisconsin defensive backs. And Saban just says, ah, my guys could probably do better. And they they couldn't. And and I think it was they never threw down the middle of the field versus whiskey. Again, very accurate. It was always down the sidelines. And I, I think that in many ways, what you saw against Wisconsin was not a sophisticated offense. I think it was it looked like a lot of like 1970s NFL ball where it was just run the ball right at them. And when they suck up the safeties too much, make them pay over top. And I think Saban just went into that thinking. Well, my guys will be better over the top and my guys will do better along the defensive line, along the front seven. Zeke's not going to run all over us. I'm not going to let, you know, they're not going to be able to do to us what they did against Wisconsin. So I, I think that Saban may have looked at the tape and said, yeah, but we're not Wisconsin. And as it turns it out, so. Well, OK, yeah, true, true. That, that's a, it, it, Saban's defense. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you got a slightly more sophisticated version of an Ohio state offense with Cardell Jones. It was still mostly run the ball and throw it deep. But as spikes points out, they incorporated a bigger passing tree. There were balls thrown down the middle of the field. And when it comes down to it, if you have a offensive line that was clicking and it was clicking and you had a running back who was clicking and as, as Buckeye Esquire points out, they didn't know Zeke had gone super Saiyan. And sometimes you just have to be hot at the right time. And that's what a playoff gets you. It's what a playoff gets you. Ohio state didn't need to be the best team in September or October or, well, okay, it, it, or the beginning of November. But once you got to the end of November and shit started clicking, no one was ready for it. They just hadn't looked like that all year. 
They hadn't mm-hmm. looked like a deep throwing team all year. And, and I think that's that's the case you make if you're Austin with this guy on the hill. Um, again, my 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 one, I I just don't know how many people are going to disagree. What are your thoughts, Kyle? So, are you, you going to take the pro JT Barrett stance? <laughs> I I I could do it too. I I don't agree with it, but I can make the argument. Yeah, I. Braxton couldn't throw deep by that time, uh, not with his shoulder the way it was. Braxton never threw the ball again. Nope. Not not competitively. Braxton Miller, not in the NFL, not at Ohio State, never threw the ball ever again. I do think JT beats Oregon for what it's worth. Maybe. Potentially. We we all know the real we all know the real national championship game was Ohio State versus Bama. In the same way mm-hmm. that we all know the real national championship game this past year was Ohio State versus Georgia. Those are the real yeah. national title games. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I I think in that year. I'm yeah, I, I think no J, injury, JT, JT could have won. Yeah, JT uh, especially JT, against Oregon. Yeah, yeah. If JT didn't get hurt, I th- man, he he would he win every game, but that Bama game would be would definitely be very iffy to say that Ohio State would win with JT still. And and a lot of that is like what what you and um as these spikes mentioned about it's the unknown that really carried Ohio State of um to beat Bama. And and let's let's not kid ourselves. It, it came down to one last throw at the end of the game too. Like got Ohio State was holding on to the end there and won by one score. Yeah, I mean, we have to we have to make the counter argument uh, with JT versus Bama would have looked like that Clemson game, the bad one. Maybe, I think that's a, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, I think JT Barrett had regressed even JT Barrett got worse as a quarterback as time went on, which to me is, is you can only point at urban Meyer, the excessive running, the, the coaching. If your quarterback's regressing, that's the coach's fault. I, I don't know what else it could be. Um, I will never speak of this again. Yeah. Um, I'll say this. Of course, of course, Cardell was lights out against Wisconsin. That was the greatest beat down in college football history. You want I'll, you want me to take a you want me to have a hill to die on? That might be the greatest beat down in college football history. Is it? Yeah. Kyle, they beat the spread by 62 or 63 points. Wisconsin was favored going into that game. They okay, beat that's, that's the fair. spread the, by it was either 62 or 63 points. I d- go go. I dare dare anybody to go find a game in which the spread was beat that badly. Please, someone go find that game. Beat them so bad their coach quit and went to the Pac-12. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's that's a good question. I mean, the one that came to my mind was, um, was just um, two years ago. That one was That's, a beat down. Okay. Well, one, Georgia would have been favored going into that game. Yes. And it's week one. We're, we're not talking about a we're not talking about a conference championship game. So I, it has to be. Yeah. I'm. I'm no. N- neither circumstance nor numbers bear that out, in my opinion.
All right. Um, it needs to be said about Cardell Jones. He had a slow start. Ohio State was on their way to getting beat down by Bama in that game. Cardell had a couple rough opening drives. Yeah, 21 to 6. Uh, Cardell Jones had a turnover or two. Ohio State was on their way to a, to being beaten down in that game at one point, and Cardell Jones played his role in that. We can talk about the offensive onpouring that came after that moment. We should. We have talked about the offensive onpouring that is, came after that. But Cardell owes his owns his piece of that start to that game. He had an ugly turnover against Oregon early in that game as well. Could we have seen lower scoring versions, more conservative, more trotting versions of these games if JT Barrett's the quarterback? Uh, you know, you're putting a lot of weight on one guy to change the entire makeup of a game. But I, I, I think that what you what you get with JT Barrett is what you expect. And with Cardell Jones it was more of a wild card. One guy considerably more dependable, one guy considerably more explosive. And I think that's that's kind of JT Barrett versus Cardell Jones in a sense. Yeah, I've been trying to trying to find anything about like largest spread, but like largest spread difference, but yeah, I'm not even sure how to word that. Mm. All right, Kyle, we have a we have a couple more questions, or excuse me, a couple more hot takes here, a couple more All statements. Right. Uh, do you have them up? Which one do you want to go to? I do have it up here. Uh, ooh, ouch. Archie Griffin isn't the best running back in Ohio State history. So this can be. All right. So let, let me just acknowledge this off, 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 off of the top. There's not a running back that played. Is he alluding to Evan Pryor? That, that would be a very awesome thing to do. Um, <laughs> That would be. First off, let's just acknowledge athletes are bigger, faster, stronger. There's not a running back in the 70s who played in the 70s that would even make Ohio State's roster. Is that a hill I need to die on as well? There's not a... Archie Griffin would not make Ohio State's roster based off of... If you, if you took him, put him in a time machine and just whipped him forward to 2023. Probably didn't even make the roster. But that's just because... we. We're really bad at acknowledge, acknowledging that fact, I think, sometimes because we, of course, love to put these guys up on pedestals. Of course we do. But, like, we all know, like, we can, when it comes to something at, where it's just pure math, like, Jesse Owens was, of course, one of the best ever do it for his time. But, but we now... We, we know for a fact Usain Bolt's faster because because it's 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 such a one to one that there's no debating it. Right. Do you see my point, Kyle? Like we just need to yeah. acknowledge bigger, faster, stronger. The the line just keeps getting moved. So. So I think we, we just have to put one big to even entertain this conversation. We need to put one big asterisk on this conversation that is essentially, you know, for their era. Yeah, but I mean, a great running back can't can't get the yardage if they don't have the, the big old slobs protect, um, clearing the paths for him. A hundred percent. There are running backs who could have done better if they had better in front of them. Um, again, zero zero offense 
to Eddie George, who was great and is great. Doesn't hurt that he had Corey Stringer and Orlando Pace in front of him. Yeah. It, re it really doesn't hurt. And that's not again, that's not me disrespecting Eddie George. That's just me saying that who else could have. There, there are there are names at Ohio State who were very good, who maybe we don't put on that same pedestal. Like, who are the S tier running backs in quasi modern Ohio State football? It's it's Archie. It's Eddie. It's Zeke. You know what I mean? Like. But what about what about a guy like Keith Byers? What if Keith Byers had had the absolute hogs in front of him that Eddie George had? Greatest fullback ever. The, the term fullback doesn't mean what it used to mean or what it currently means. I don't know. He, he was a running back. He ran the ball. I, I don't. He was he was a person who ran the ball. Bad service dropping off. See you, Esquire. You, you see what I mean, though? Like. It's football is so tough because we're not just talking about. This guy runs 100 meters and we time him because like even with baseball. Even with baseball, it's you standing there with a bat and we can talk about the quality of pitching and yada, 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 of course. But it's still just you standing there with a bat. Football is so tough. And again, no disrespect to Eddie George, but does he win the Heisman? With a non-spectacular line in front of him? Maybe. Maybe not. I'm not I'm not studied. I'm not well studied enough, if I'm being honest, to talk about the quality of offensive line in front of Archie. I'm just I'm not. I, I wish I was. I wish I could speak intelligently on that. Um, Zeke had a great crew in front of him, a, a, a crew that turned into a good crew, but struggled at the beginning of the year. But, you know, Tyler Decker went first round. Um, a bunch of those guys were high draft picks. I don't, you know, no, no disrespect, no disrespect, no disrespect. But I don't think any of them were uh, no, no one was Orlando Pace. Is, this is not a, this is not a crazy hill to die on. Orlando Pace is the greatest Ohio State offensive lineman of all time. That's that's not a crazy statement. Corey Stringer, by the way, is also one of the best offensive linemen to ever play at Ohio State, and they happen to be on the same team. Mm -hmm. It's it's just so hard. Football is just the ultimate team sport, and it's really individual awards and individual accolades are just inherently dishonest. <laughs> Kyle, is Archie Griffin? Is is this is this a crazy hill to die on? Because I, I don't think it is. I my I think my take here, it's a crazy hill to die on to have a strong opinion on this. I, I don't think I don't think I don't think there's a warranted strong opinion to have here. To say this guy is the best Ohio State running back of all time, period done. I mean, I mean, he's the only with two Heismans. I know. Yeah. I know that's 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 the kicker right there, Jared. That's that's what's going to elevate him over anybody else. But should it? It's, it's a big reason. I just don't I don't the think it would reason. I don't think. I do not think. That they'll ever give a Heisman to a guy twice ever again. I, I think there's too much politicking. I think there's too much. Just let's not do it. Let's spread it around. I again, we're going back. To, I'm going to we're going back to Tim Tebow on this again. Tim Tebow probably deserved to win the Heisman a second time. His his second year was arguably just as good, if not better than his first the year that he did win the Heisman. I'll say it. 
I will say it. I think the fact that they didn't give Tebow a second Heisman, he's the greatest running back of Florida's best running back of all time. Fred Taylor has something to say to you, but I, the, your joke is well received regardless. Um, Fred Taylor was a good running back, but that's, that's just my ADHD talking. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, how do, how, how do you say? Because the he Heisman's bullshit. Like, I'm sorry, Kyle, you and I every year talk about how the Heisman is political, regional voting bullshit. Yeah, it is. We, and it is. We say it because it's true. So now we're going to say, well, Archie is clearly the best running back who ever uh, played at Ohio State because he has two Heismans. Aren't, does that make us hypocrites? Is that, is that no. I think, oh, no. <laughs> bullshit. No, Jared, of course shit. not. Of course not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, my, my opinion on this is that I, I do I do think you're going to catch grief on this one. Uh, I do think people will get upset with you on this one. Um, but we this is such a untouchable statement because he has two Heisman's. But yet we all also agree that the Heisman's bullshit. It's hypocritical. Just like the Heisman. Well, no, the, the I don't know if hypocritical <laughs> is the word for the Heisman. I would say I would say the Heisman's just it's bullshit. Like what what better word is there? What better word is there? It's bullshit. Um, who did Austin think was the best running back? He doesn't say he simply says Archie Griffin isn't the best running back in Ohio State history. And I, I agree. And and I and I agree only because I think it's I think it's absurd to say that any one guy is. We could do a tier list, Kyle. Should we do a tier list? We could do a tier list, and I and I would put Archie in it's... the S tier. Next episode. Now we we got big plans next episode. Okay. But Kyle, should should we do that? Should. Hey, hey, Spikes, can you do me a favor? Can you go write that in the Wasteland channel for me? Um, I, I, I'm, but right now, like, I'm putting, Ar I'm putting Archie in the, uh, I'm putting Archie in the S tier, but he's not going to be the only one in the S tier. Zeke's going to be there, and Eddie George is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, then, the, you know, these are just names I'm pulling off the top of my head. Um, Hopalong should probably be on in there, although like it feels weird to say that because I've never seen him play. <laughs> but like, I mean, he's got never saw Archie. Never saw Archie play. In no, but we have we we have good we have we have t we had TV then though. Okay. We have we do have. I didn't. I never watched him play live. There was my voice. I, mean, I never watched him I mean, play can, live. I mean, you can't you can't not include uh, Keith Byers too. Who should have won a Heisman? He should have won a Heisman. Yeah, but and that this is my point. We shouldn't be using the Heisman as the be all end all. And, and that talk includes about who, who, having who could, two. Like best running backs. If didn't get out of trouble and and stayed but at Ohio did. State. But he did. But he did. I know. I'm just saying if. If though. But he did. Could have had, could have had, could have had conversations about that too. Could have. Aren't. <laughs> we could have. We aren't. Yeah. All that would be more. It'll be around interesting to find out where we put him on the tier list, though, because right. I feel All like right. we'll, we'll fight over that. All right. Next question here, Jared. Not a question. Oh. It's an opinion. Okay. Opinion from a guy Zach. Ryan Day is the 21st century. John Cooper. Hard disagree. Hard disagree. Right. Well, for one thing, he's already 
<laughs> Cooper only beat Michigan twice, yes? Um, I think so, yeah. So Day's already done that in considerably less tries. So but there, there you go. There, there's a, there's Day a has also thing. won bowl games, as Spikes points out. There's a there's a great there's a great thing that um that Eleven Warriors posted out um last week talking about where Ryan Day stacks up compared to his um previous uh, previous coaches. Sure, elevenwarriors.com give him another boost yeah. there. Yeah, b- because First, they need that from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First four years. As a, as a head coach, and this is this is kind of very interesting. Um, great um, great numbers here. First four years, Cooper was own four against the team up north, and Ryan Day is one and two. With the COVID year. could could be could have been two and two, but for the record, he was one and two in the first four years. Because Mich- because Michigan ducked. Yeah, I know, I know. Because Michigan, it's it's two and two, and in the books. One and two in our hearts mm-hmm. and minds. Two and two. Mm-hmm. Uh, first four years, John Cooper had zero Big Ten championships. Ryan Day tied with Earl Bruce, Bruce with two. And by the way, OK, we also need to point out hell of a lot easier to get a Big Ten championship in John Cooper's time. Because you could have multiple teams. This is. No disrespect to Jim Trestle. This is why Jim Trestle has so many gosh Oops. darn uh, Big Ten championships, because you could just you could you could share them back then. Uh, Big Ten championships through four years. Yeah, what I was just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, was just I was reading it. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm surprised Tress only had one through four year and. For the record, his one was a share. Earl Bruce, his second one was a share. Therefore, Ryan Day is the only Ohio State coach <laughs> to have two non-shared Big Ten. And by the way, the only the only guy to have two that were actually won and not just awarded. But but this is this is an interesting deal. Um there have been only four coaches who've won a national title in their first four years. Um, Paul Brown, Trestle, Meyer, and Woody Hayes, which, if you know Ohio State history, are the only four coaches to win titles. Interesting. Urban Meyer would have had two if not for the postseason ban. Oh, probably. I what they 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 probably win that I, Big Ten championship game, right? I think so, but wasn't that year? What year? What I mean, that it's was so 2012. hard. It's so hard because that team wasn't very good, but they just kept winning. <laughs> so it's it's really hard. Even though I don't think that again, I don't think that team was very good. It's really hard to say that they wouldn't have won a game when all they did was win games. Oh yeah, that that was right. That was when there was um repeat of Alabama and LSU. No, That's no, no, right. no, 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 Kyle. The Big Ten game, Big Ten game. Oh, the Big they, Ten. They they weren't. No, that team couldn't win a national title. That team couldn't win a national yeah. title, Kyle. That was that was Wisconsin versus Michigan State, correct? That was Wisconsin from the leaders division and Nebraska from the legends division. Nebraska? Wisconsin defeated Nebraska 70 to 31. Wisconsin? That was, was that was that the Russell Wilson? That was the Russell Wilson year. That was the Russell Wilson year. Ohio State beat that Wisconsin team. No. The year before was the Russell Wilson year. Um, I'm, I'm confusing. No, I'm confusing was, 2011 that... and 2012. Yeah, no, that was the year before. Spikes correctly checks me on that. Yeah, no, that was the one with. Um, 
um I, I did I oh shoot what's his first name gordon um or marvin food services melvin melvin gordon marvin marvin melvin, melvin gordon he was the one he he rushed nine times for 216 yards <laughs> That is the most Wisconsin thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Wisconsin only threw the ball eight times that game and still put up. Okay, no, 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 I'm points. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's the most Wisconsin thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Actually, that's bordering line on Iowa. That's that's almost the most Iowa thing I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, Austin says if you can't him. beat Michigan, if you can't beat Michigan and win a natty, uh, well, they, 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 they did beat Michigan, but won the big 10. So take that Austin. Um, all right, Kyle, we have one more. Uh, yeah, we've got one more here. Let me pull it up here. Were there, were um, there any more numbers from that? 11 words article to um, that were interesting to pull from, or do you want to move on to the, yeah, well, the last uh, just real, real quick here. So, uh, through the first four years, I mean, it, it's, it's a big part here. It's a big part, but through the first four years, second best, uh, winning percentage in Ohio state history for coach day. Second to Meyer, I assume. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops, I put that in the wrong, the wrong section. There you go, Jared. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ryan Day loses six so far through the same time frame. Urban only lost four. I ironically, the difference is two Michigan games. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is right. And then the other thing that was very interesting to, well, I guess it, it comes to no surprise here. I mean, there's a, there's only three coaches that you can compare for recruiting though, but from a recruiting standpoint, Ryan Day, Ryan Day leads though in, in terms of average. He is... Um, now, but we, we also need to put an asterisk on all of this to say that Ryan Day inherited a much better Ohio State team. That's true. Th yeah. Than anyone else did. But look at that first year for like Jim that's Trussell, not even though. debatable. Look at that first year, though, from Jim Trussell. Fifth, what? fifth, fifth. I think that was that year they brought in like five or four or five insane offensive linemen, if I remember correctly. But God, you're asking me about a recruiting class from 2002. So um, recruiting rankings first. Uh, yeah, it's. And I especially bring this up on the recruiting side because like. Mark Pantone's right there, <laughs> like he's doing that literally with Urban Meyer's recruiting front office um it needs it just needs to be said when, when comparing all these numbers it needs to be said jim trestle was brought in because the program wasn't where it needed to be urban meyer was brought in after the only bad season in ohio state's 20th 21st century um earl bruce um, replaces Woody Hayes, but Woody Hayes had fallen off at that point. Uh, the program was not where it needed to be. Um, oh, uh, God. Oh, hold on, hold on. I want to go through this. Hold on. I want to oh, go through this. God, we're not quick, going Jared. through. We're not going through a recruiting class from 2002. <laughs> we're not doing it. No, I just want to just I just want to say a few names. That's it. In here, in here, I'm going to start from the lowest here. AJ Hawk, Nick Mangold, Santonio Holmes, um, Rob Sims, uh, Troy Smith, Bobby Carpenter, EJ Underwood, Nate Sally, Roy Hall, uh, Maurice Claret, Justin Zwick, and uh, Derek Morris. That's that's an insane, insane group there. 
Uh, yeah, it's 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 worth noting that. Yeah, yeah, it's so that some of the biggest names are, are names that didn't pan out. Ironically, mm-hmm. um, Mike D'Andrea didn't pan out. Derek Morris didn't really pan out. Justin Zwick didn't really pan out. Interesting. It's it's, 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 it's interesting to note. Way down at the bottom there, though, San, San, San Antonio Holmes ranked 344th, Nick Mangold 399th, AJ Hawk 543rd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, because essentially AJ Hawk became what DeAndre was supposed to become. Um, and Troy Smith became what Justin Zwick was supposed to become. So that's how that pan, pans out for you. Mm-hmm. Zwick was awful except for the Alamo Bowl when Troy Smith was suspended. And it was a meaningless bowl game because all bowl games are meaningless. Um uh Kyle, one last one last go. What, All right, what do we one last one here. An expanded playoff is actually bad for the sport. I I can argue either side of this. Yeah. I was gonna say depending on depending on how you view it. Like if you're if you're one where you believe you believe that it's going to ultimately be a a uh, just a two powerhouse conferences going at it every year, then yeah, it might be good. Or, or it's just maybe too many games now. Like they're playing, they're playing probably just as much games as an NFL um, team is playing as well. If you if you make it all the way to the national title, that that could, that could be bad, right? Um. <sighs> Part of the one of the things that makes college football so fun is really giving so much attention to a Alabama versus Ole Miss game because Ole Miss who already has three losses might upset Bama. And if Bama loses, then that might knock them down a few spots when there's only four spots in the playoffs and they Mm -hmm. could in theory go to anybody. It just makes every game insanely important. Yeah, it's, it's the saying every game matters. Every week mattered matters in the, Kyle, in college back, football and, and was, with us going to expanding this out it's i know i know you and i jared had the um mario man. the mario man rule we had the mario man rule you get one you only get one well this this may this may change it to you get you get you get two mario mans now when it was the bcs you had no guarantee of an extra of an extra life there there you no. had no guarantee of a one up you could lose it's possible that you could lose and still get in, but there was no guarantee. Then we made it a four team playoff and the Mario man rule has worked most of the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it, how, how, how you, how you lose, how you lose um, and who you lose to matters. Um, it has not always worked out for Ohio state that you could lose one and still get into the playoff. Um, but more or less has. So now if it's eight teams, 12 teams, I mean, you know, maybe you lose two or maybe we move into a space in which like the out of conference really doesn't matter. Cause as long as you win the big 10 and you win the big 10 championship, like do we want the Notre Dame game not to matter? It be, really, yeah, be, be, because I think it, and I maybe they do auto bids, maybe they don't do auto bids, um, 
But like if if we enter into a world in which we'll just win your conference and that's all that matters. Is that is that the college football that we stay up till 3 a.m. watching Hawaii for? It does it lose a bit of its spikes says down in the chat. Regular season is a double elimination playoff. That's the uh, more appropriate way of our Mar saying our Mario man role. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, it is. You know. I, I it is good. It is good that you don't have to go undefeated anymore. That is a good thing. I don't like two teams was not enough. Two teams was never enough. Four teams, I feel like has been pretty close to perfect most of the time. Eight, yeah, I, I eight agree. could be eight could be fun. As long as you do it right. And by do it right. I want teams. I want guaranteed spots for your Boises of the world. That that's the way that's only gonna, that's the only way it's going to be fun to me. I don't want whether it be Ohio State or Oklahoma or Alabama or USC or Georgia or whoever. I don't want teams to be able to comfortably lose twice and still get in because at that point, it's no longer college football. At that point, it's no longer college football. Now, my dream scenario for the playoffs. Is you have two. Conferences, we're going back to the big two. You, if you want to know the, about the big two search through our episode, you'll find it. The big two eventually it is Kyle and I's belief that eventually we're going to have a big North and a big South. It's the big 10 in the sec, but whatever it's inevitable. I think so too spikes. You're going to have the big North and the big South. They're going to separate from the NCAA. Declare themselves a semi pro league. And govern themselves. Yeah. I, I think that looks pretty, yeah, does he spikes exactly? It looks inevitable at this point where it's leading to. Especially everything that you're hearing with, with promotion what's going on relegation. in ACC. That's what I want, but that's not inevitable. We're, we're, we're putting that one on the wish list, not the prediction list. Especially everything that you're seeing in the in ACC country, too. Oh, yeah. You have a bunch of those teams that are meeting with lawyers to see just how locked in that grant of rights deal is yep yeah kyle you're gonna you're gonna be living in big 10 territory here soon <laughs> i i had i'd had a few co-workers talk to me about that and i said well it depends it depends on how um I, the question was the question was about like like where, where, where is this heading to and i said well it's heading it looks like it's heading to a two super conference teams that's go or super conference um super conferences where they're gonna be their own league essentially and then you're gonna have a single a then a double a layer of um of college football programs as well too and he's like he's like well it, this this is just all because of kids of uh, these these um these kids um wanting money for their likeliness and i said that's not entirely that's, true that's not, no it's not at all true that's a hundred percent not true um a hundred percent not true this is about tv money yeah it, it and that too and that no, too not not spikes. not in that too well get off my lawn okay yeah that it is literally nothing to do if anything it's the other way around all of this which is the, the conference realignment and the TV money, all of that is what's leading to the kids getting paid for likeness. Because the more money the teams and the conferences make, the more absurd it looks to not let the kids also get money. 
So he has his, it's not only is he wrong, Kyle, but he's backwards. He's got his chicken and his eggs crossed. Yep. It's the other way around. And even then, it's not even a direct cause and effect. It's just like I said, making it look even more ridiculous. The more, the bigger the TV contracts and the coaching contracts and the, the bigger that money became, the worse it looked to not let the kids go out and make money independently, let alone yep. actually paying them. Yep. I, but yeah, the, uh, anyway, that, that was a whole thing, but the, in my ideal playoff would essentially be, you have two conferences, they're managing their own shit. And at the end of the year, each conference has their own four team playoff. And then the winner of the big North and the winner of the big South would play each other. You have an eight team playoff four from each conference. They declare their own champions and then they play each other. That's a, that's a beautiful eight team playoff in my opinion. And if you really want to, if you really want to go strict on it, you really want to just go for it, make it a six team. Give the number one from each conference a buy, but not, I think the eight's fine. I think the eight is fine, but the eight is fine in that scenario because in that scenario, teams aren't scheduling for themselves anymore. The in that scenario, your your conferences are handling scheduling. There, there's no. I'm sorry. There's no more Kent State. There's no more San Diego State. It's got to be power five teams, power two teams, Kyle, or in the power, future. Yes, in the future. Yes. Power two. Yeah, you you each each team will play someone else from the other conference for three or so games in September, and then you go right into conference competition. And that's it. You're only you're only playing teams. Within this system, which will keep things more more comparable more comparable not totally comparable because mm -hmm. who, who you know it's it, but it's just like the big 10 right who if you're in the big 10 west sometimes sometimes who ends up being the representative in the big 10 west is just the team that ends up not having to play you know ohio state Penn State and Michigan or, you know, you, or you somehow only has to play one of them instead of two of them. You know what I mean? That's so mm. you might have something similar in that situation, but it's closer. It's closer to like for like schedules. I think that is all the questions, Jared, we have here. Yeah. Is that, was that a good episode? Did we do a good job. Spikes. Yeah. I well, yeah, I think, you know, one, I think that's good. One, one to ten. How do we do? Was that an episode? I think that was an episode. <laughs> Nine. I'll take it. I'll take in May. In May, I'll take it. I will, I will take a nine in the month of May. All right, um, Kyle. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, I know that was it. Yeah, I think it it was tennis, wasn't it? Uh, the Ohio State team um, came up short. I think it was a week ago in the um, in the title game um, last week. I think it was. I believe it was tennis, wasn't it? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to I'm starting to doubt myself. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it, it was it was um, tennis. Um, well, they redeemed themselves and they have a doubles um, natty just this go. past weekend here. There you go. Hey, that's listen, we're about teamwork here at Ohio State. All right. We don't want that singles championship. Give us that doubles championship. That's how it works, right? You can only have one. Yes, that, that's yep. how that works, right? All right. Congratulations to those two, whoever they were. Um, <laughs> as in um, as in uh, or Sloopcast 
fashion Jared. Pronounce Andrew's name. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Andrew. Ugh. La Shin. La. Nope. No. Loot. <laughs> Shining. Loot Shining. Should I be going Eastern European with that? Lushinig. Lushinig? Maybe. That sounds that sounds so I, I needed country of origin. Do we have country of origin <laughs> that would help? Also I James tell you. Also James Trotter. And James Trotter. <laughs> six Thank four you, six Trotter. four over the Texas duo. There you go. Eat that, Austin. I assume it was Austin. Yes, it might not University be. of Texas. University of Texas. Sometimes with those small sports, sometimes with those small sports, yeah. they're not always Austin. Yep, no, it was it was it was the, the Longhorns. Okay. Okay. Lushenig. Andrew Lushenig. Lushenig. I feel like I go like I go like full Russian with it and be like Lushnig. <laughs> I need country I of origin, though. That would help a lot. Right, but no, that, that's that's it. A lot of a lot. There's still a lot of um, moving parts of recruiting, um, upcoming visits and all that. We'll keep you all up to date once once those visits happen next week. We're doing something super fun, super special. And as far as I know, it's the first time anything like this has ever been done. I think Ooh, it'll be fun. That's a tease. That's that. And that's why I don't want to tell you what it is. I, that's why I don't want to tell you what it is, because I'm actually afraid someone will steal it. I want to be the first people to ever do this. It's going to be fun. There'll be pictures. Um, it's not, it's, it's not the, it's, it's not the running back tier list, but it should be fun. Again, I think it's the first time anything like this has ever been done. Um, I've never seen it done, but I also haven't like gone to great lengths to research if anyone else has done it. Cause quite frankly, I want the deniability. Uh, the week after that might be a running back tier list. Uh, also maybe a mock, we haven't done well, we uh, haven't done a mock since the first week of May. So maybe the second week of June, we'll do a, a, a new recruiting mock. Um, I think June, we got some stuff lined up for June, I think is what I'm trying to tell you. We have some stuff lined up for June. I think we got at least three episodes already lined up for June, which I can tell you right now was not the case at the beginning of May. But Kyle, with all that, oh, and I haven't introduced the band yet. I haven't introduced the band yet. Tonight's ending music will be Brainiac. Uh, Brainiac was a highly experimental, highly influential uh, band from Dayton in the 90s. Um, they could have broke mainstream, but the uh, lead singer tragically died before that had an opportunity to happen. Um, I hadn't played them in a very long time. Don't know why. So I thought I'd remedy that tonight. Um, again, a little experimental, maybe a little weird for your ears. But uh, you'll you'll hopefully get past that. Um, and again, as always, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you don't get the music. There is a link down in the show notes. There is a link down in the show notes. Uh, but if you're listening to the audio version of this, then uh, you can just you can just keep listening. So once again, this is Brainiac. And uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, watch local podcasters. Once again, this is Brainiac.